G'day folks. Well, it's time for the day we line. I said engine autopsy. Uh, this is the one that I ripped out of the little green car. It's had a pretty hard life. Well, reasonable up until I got it, and then I sort of murdered it, running it on Jet A1, and uh, running it without the coil pack plugged in even. It was just detonating itself to the point where I think it smashed a lot of the compression rings and things like that, and blew the head gasket. Well, finished the head gasket off. I already knew it had a bad head gasket, but yeah. The aim of the game tonight is just to separate the transmission and get it up on an engine uh, stand for a full autopsy. So basically I'm going to split it along here, take the manual transmission off for a later date. We'll dismantle that one later and then get stuck into the engine. Yeah, a bit of work there. I know one of my subscribers wants this linkage assembly because his has fallen apart on an Opal car, Opal Astra or something like that. Um, these are just a standard General Motors engine, Daewoo, Opal, all those companies use them. They're used in forklifts, they're used in all sorts of things that are very basic, crude, generic, but reasonably reliable engine. This one's a 1.5 litre I think. Or 1.3, it's either 1.3 or 1.5 single overhead cam, belt driven camshaft. Um, yeah, they're not too bad. So, main thing is to separate the looms like I'm doing. Get the loom off there. That, I believe, is the uh, signal sender for the speedometer because it's running off the differential. That has two wires on it and it comes off from the gear selector so that's the reversing light switch. When you throw it into reverse your reverse lights come on thanks to that little switch. I'll find out for sure when I get into the gearbox but um, there's no need for three wires on a reversing light switch and that's going onto the diff so that looks like a uh, inductive pickup similar to a crankshaft position sensor down there. So that would be speedometer signal, because it's a digital speedo and odometer. That will be uh, for the reversing lights. So once I've got all that off, I'll separate this assembly here. It's all part of the gear shift. To change gears, it's sort of a matter of um, it's a push, pull and rotate type thing. So if we're pulling back... I think that'd be third or something. I think that's reverse. Yeah. So that'd be four, fourth and fifth. But if you go all the way back here, yeah, that's reverse. We'll get into that in a later date when I get into the uh, manual transmission, but for now I just want to split this thing in two and put it on the stand. So let's do that. Ripping the looms off, unbolt that, or cut, just cut the damn thing off because the loom's useless. Uh, that goes to coils. That goes to a coolant temp sensor on the cylinder head, on the back there. That's why the fans weren't running. This thing, the, the fans just didn't run and I brought it down to a uh, failed coolant temp sensor. And uh, yeah, that's why this car cooked in traffic and never ran properly since because heat soak destroyed one or two of the injectors and it also caused a head gasket failure. And that was before I got it. But I still managed to keep it running long enough to well, provide some entertainment. So, let's rip this loom back and work on undoing those, I think it's a 21 millimeter bolts or three quarter inch bolts, something like that, all the way around. Okay, there we go. After removing a number of different sized bolts, at least four different head sizes, 12, 14, 16, and I think 22 millimeter, yeah, there's a bit of a mixture, but the uh, casing came off nice and easy. So that's the transmission, 
there's not much to it really it's a very tiny little transmission for a five speed but we'll break into that one later a um, bit on how the clutch works well when you depress the clutch pedal uh, this one being hydraulic this slave cylinder pushes on this lever that lever pushes that bearing out that's called the throw out bearing if you hear horrible squealing noises whenever you use the clutch often it's because this bearing is shot this one's pretty old and rough and I've given it a pretty hard time so it's not in the best condition but that's a throw out bearing uh, that's the main transmission input shaft if I turn it as you can see the outputs turning that's because it's in gear at the moment uh, the clutch itself when you push the throw out bearing out it depresses these fingers which release the pressure plate uh, that basically removes drive from the engine the uh, throw out bearing spins independent of the uh, oh, I suppose I wouldn't say independent but this whole assembly spins this is the flywheel ring gear all bolted to the crankshaft so this whole lot spins it's balanced it, it, it rotates constantly when the engines running so when you want to drive basically all you're doing is engaging this inner plate by releasing the pressure off these fingers uh, it's a bit hard to describe but yeah when you put your foot down on the clutch to the floor it, this bearing pushes these fingers in it's spinning like it's spinning the bearing race but it's released pressure on the plate in here which I'll show you in a minute which has friction material on it uh, the problem with the RAV4's clutch is that, that friction material is worn down so far it's disengaging but there's not enough travel on it to actually re-engage properly under full power so it's worn out uh, yeah I'll, I'll strip this off and give you a bit, bit of a uh, look at it before I put this on the engine engine stand because uh, the clutch is the crucial link between the engine and the transmission autos of course not you have a torque converter a fluid dynamic converter but manuals it's dependent on that that's your link if that's stuck engaged you won't even be able to start the engine you could roll start it and keep going but it'd be really hard keeping the car moving without a uh, functioning clutch or if the clutch is blown your flywheel and everything will be spinning but there's no friction between the flywheel assembly and transmission to deliver torque power and you'll sit there revving and won't go anywhere or you might go running pace at the most you'd be redlining the engine and you're barely walk barely driving along at running pace and that's because your clutch is probably blown or this bearing self-destructed or something like that so anyway enough on that one let's uh, strip the rest of it off yeah so before I go any further I guess the easiest way of looking at it is when you put your foot on the clutch completely yeah this pushes the bearing out pushes these fingers out in so when you step on the clutch it's thrusting the throw out bearing towards the engine towards the flywheel pushing these fingers in and releasing pressure on the pressure plate which floats away from the flywheel and starts spinning independently or at least spinning at a lower or stationary speed the bearing spinning at engine speed and uh, yeah as you start releasing your foot off the clutch the uh, fingers are slowly released and you start transmitting power from the engine to the transmissions input shaft which is that that's all it is a small car like this that's the size of your input shaft that handles all the horsepower all the abuse you've given it everything through there through a friction plate basically brake brake pad material on a disc and yeah once it's when it's working it works really well when it wears out just like brakes it loses efficiency and eventually completely fails to work and fails to create friction and that's all that's all a clutch is it's a mechanical friction drive uh, automatic transmission torque converter is a fluid dynamic drive has a stator and turbine impeller and everything like that inside it and it just relies on having a fill of fluid inside it to uh, create resistance and drive and slip when you want it to and lock up in many cases a locking torque converter 
Uh, we'll go into that one later. I did a video on an automatic transmission years ago, but I knew bugger all about them and I still don't know a lot about them. But when I get the chance, I'll grab another automatic transmission and torque converter, do a bit more research and try and give a better description on how it works. But for now, we're looking at manual transmission and engine drive assembly. Okay, there we go. That's our bare flywheel, like you'd be familiar with if you've seen an engine on a stand, that sort of thing. But this assembly here is your link between the engine and the transmission. Between that, which is rigid mounted to the, <coughs> sorry, rigid mounted to the crankshaft, and that, which is basically, unless it's in neutral, it's rigidly connected to the wheels. So you've got power source, transmission, and then output to wheels. Now, this is the clutch assembly. This is the clutch plate. Uh, despite the hell I gave it when I had it, I think this one's been replaced at some point. This wouldn't be a factory clutch, no way, considering the mileage the car had on it. Uh, as you can see, this pressure plate here is uh, discolored. There's a lot of bluing. It's a very big hot spot there. Uh, that's just from me abusing it riding the hell out of it whilst it was running on Jet A1 and just dieseling the crap out of it. Uh, remember this engine was making horrible noises and I will post a link to the other video as a response or in the description. So yeah, you'll see what happened in the description in the next video. But either way, that is your main drive. Obviously this plate's allowed to float freely and when you depress the clutch pedal, as you can see, these fingers have come out now that I've unbolted it, but pushing these fingers in brings this steel plate back and releases, releases pressure between this plate because it has two friction surfaces, not just against the flywheel, like that, but also against that, like a secondary friction surface. So, yeah, when you put your foot on the clutch, this bearing comes forward. I can't remove it, but it comes forward, pushes on these fingers, which are more levers than springs, and as levers, they retract this plate here. That plate retracts, all pressure off this plate is relieved, and it's allowed to spin freely or become stationary depending on whether or not the vehicle is moving at the time. If it's moving at the time and it's in gear, this will be rotating at whatever speed is coming or whatever speed it is being driven by the transmission, coasting. Um, but if you're stationary, this will be stationary. That will be spinning at engine RPM, whatever you've set it for, whatever it's idling at. And then when you take start taking your foot off the clutch, this bearing will retract, these fingers will start applying pressure to this plate and it'll pinch this friction disc, this clutch pressure plate between this housing and the flywheel which are all rotating at engine speed because they're fixed. Uh, that's the best description I can really give it. I'm not even the best manual driver but I understand more about how the transmission works than I do about actually using one <laughs> which is pretty bad but yeah I really I do like driving manual as much as I do auto but I drive auto two foot left, left foot brake and it's a lot of fun. I mean, you get better response times, that sort of thing. Someone pulls out in front of you, you're already on the brake before, you are, uh, before your uh, right foot's off the gas, at least in Australia anyway. I'm not sure what the uh, American standard is, left hand drive versus right hand drive, but yeah, I drive autos two foot and I've never had an issue going from manual to auto, auto to manual, floor shift, column shift, anything like that. I can jump in any car and have absolutely no confusion or issues regardless of what foot I use to do what because on a uh, manual your left foot is a clutch and if you are well easily confused you might have an issue with uh, left foot braking on an auto then getting into a manual and well yeah I don't advise it if you're easily confused but still it's, I guess you'd say it's a racing or pro driver thing so there you go, that's a clutch assembly. Let's put this on a stand and call it a night. Thanks for watching. 
There we go. Engine on a stand. Nice and easy. I've got the oil filter off. Most of the oil's pretty much gone. I've got to redrain the, um, the crankcase, but overall, yeah, it should be pretty good. Nice, easy, easy tear down. Particularly being on the stand now, I got rid of the Datsun, so that's good. Well, the Datsun's not gone; it's still in the carport, but it won't be around much longer. I think I found someone who wants it. If not, well, I might just have to scrap it, sell it for parts. But yeah, there's a Lambda sensor in there, oxygen sensor, air conditioning compressor, clutch wiring, AC compressor is shot. And I left it open to the weather, so that'll be a nice autopsy. So, 265 mil of PAG oil. Typical R134A system. That's power steering, actually. That looked like a water pump, but that's a power steering pump. You've got high pressure and low pressure lines going into it. It's a hydraulic pump. If it comes off as one piece and works all right as a sealed unit, I'll use that as a... Uh, low speed oil pressure pump for the turbocharger jet engine. I want to I want to be able to throttle down and bypass fluid from a pump and just feed a steady 50 psi into a uh, turbocharger bearing. Yeah, so it's partly separated I think. Uh, yeah, even the lower part separating. The top part's not so important but it's the lower bit that you got to worry about. That's the uh, main engine mount. There would have been one on the transmission and one on the back where the gear shift selector was. So anyway, that's the end of that one. Thanks for watching.